exactly a year ago, I made these drawers to store my wood scraps. And it was quite a popular video because people like the fact that these drawers are interchangeable. So for example, this drawer could fit here or anywhere. But by far the most common comment I got on that video was that you'll never use those wood scraps. You were wrong about plywood scraps because this drawer has actually gotten emptier, but you were totally right on hardwood scraps. Maybe it has to do with the fact that hardwood is pretty, so I hoard little pieces. I kind of feel like making a bowl out of them. So I was thinking rather than try to cut all of these to a common size and make neat rings, I could just go with a chaotic look like this. But if I put a piece on top, it sort of trims everything off and makes it look finished. I like that better. So I want to make the top and bottom rings just as professional and refined as possible. So it'll be chaos in the middle, capped on the top and bottom by perfection. I've got this really nice looking piece of walnut here that I'm gonna use for the top ring. And in order for this to work with my simplified wedgie sled, which I have a previous video about, I have to make sure both sides are perfectly straight and consistent in thickness. And by that I mean parallel. So that's all there is to setting up that. Now I just need to cut this piece first on the back and then on the front to cut out my 12 segments. Ow. So now I just need to make that chaotic ring in between. And I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that. I think I came up with a solution. So I clamped the top ring down, so the bowl is upside down, I guess you could say. And I'm gonna start gluing down the pieces for the chaotic pattern. As I go, I can use the CNC to trim those off so that I have nice flat surfaces to glue pieces into and then put it on crooked since this is an OCD defying project. So I custom cut this piece to fit here and that completes the first ring. This actually didn't take too long. So that's the first layer all glued up. Now I'm just gonna take this bit and mill that flat. The CNC left a pretty rough finish here because of having deflection, so I'm gonna just use the drum sander to smooth that out. All right, I'm liking how this looks. I just got to thinking that I should trim these off so that I can see where the ring is. I don't want them to get lopsided. All of these pieces are just held in place with finger pressure for a bit. Nothing is clamped and, well, spoiler alert, the bowl doesn't fly apart. This time, instead of flattening it out with the CNC, I just took it all the way down with the drum sander, which worked very well. I guess all of you who don't like CNCs were right after all. They are useless. I'm gonna use the CNC to true up the inside of this. That will give me a reference so I can keep it moving straight and not get lopsided, like I was saying earlier. It will also clean up all these bumps. That'll make it easier to turn. And you can see I was getting quite lopsided already. It's cutting a lot more here than it was on the other side of the ring. I'm trying to make sure that I have at least a half inch overhanging on the inside. This is really a boring process, which is why I haven't been showing you very much of it. Just a matter of cutting up pieces and sticking them in place.
So this is going to be my last layer. It's gotten too tall to send through the drum sander, so I'll have to just use the CNC to flatten this layer and then true the inside and outside. And then we'll be ready to glue on the bottom. Since I trued all of these layers with the same zero point, they're all perfectly concentric. That makes it really easy to put this on nice and straight. So this will now be perfectly centered on the bottom ring. I'll just need to glue that in place and clamp it overnight, and tomorrow we can start turning it. I glued on two round pieces of plywood on the bottom, and that's just for the screws from the faceplate to run into. I don't have a chuck for my lathe, so I use a faceplate. So I can see I've got a bit of a problem here. Naturally, I wasn't thinking ahead, but if I had been, I should have trued this ring with the CNC. Then it would have been concentric and it would have been small enough to fit. Yeah, this is, this is going to be fine. I have a little bit of an issue with the design of this lathe. I can run a 12 inch bowl over the bed, but this doesn't extend out far enough to get the tool rest around the backside. I guess I'm going to build a custom tool rest. I actually built this custom tool rest to use with this freestanding stand. With the cabinet down there, this is about as close as I can get I'm up against the cabinet. So while this kind of works, it's not ideal. If this would be mirrored, it could be used here, and that would work about right. I don't need this tool rest anymore, so I'm just going to cut the bolt off of this side and put it on this side. Now, if you are concerned about it sticking out too far and therefore putting a lot of leverage on here, compare it to the stock one. It only sticks out about maybe three quarter inch farther, so I don't think it'll be a problem. So the outside is all turned mostly round, and before I get that too thin, I'm going to move to the inside. And I hadn't really thought of it when I made this, but I think it'll work good for the inside. Oh yeah. From a turning perspective, this project was kind of interesting. There was a grain going in every possible direction, yet it seemed to turn reasonably easy. Ha! Yeah, right. The gouge I'm using here is actually carbide, which really helped a lot. I tried to use high-speed steel, but I just could not get it to cut as well as the carbide. And this device is a very simple dial indicator bowl thickness gauge. Homemade, of course. So that's all finished turning, I think. I've got the wall thickness down to just over 3 8 inch. I don't want to go a whole lot thinner than that. So I'm just going to sand this up to a nice fine finish, and then we'll part it off. The end grain really needs to be sanded in every direction, so I did it with the lathe not running. Well, the sun just went down. I've been sanding literally all day. This is all done now. I just need to part it off and true up the bottom. As I mentioned earlier, I don't have a chuck. So last time I did this, I just used a parting tool to cut a concave into the bottom so it would sit on a rim. And that worked extremely well. So I'm gonna do the same thing this time. No need to rechuck it. The part that's left there in the middle should be small enough that if I just tug on this, it ought to break. There we go. Now I just need to remove that from the middle. So here you can definitely see the concave. I should have tried a little harder to get it smooth. I couldn't see these bumps in there, 
but it is worth noting the lighting here is exaggerating that quite a bit. It's not as bad as it looked. Anyway, I'm now gonna use a chisel to try to pare this off, and then we'll deal with those bumps and see if I can smooth it out a little with sandpaper. I'm using compressed air to open up all the pores so that it takes finish nicely. I like this stuff because it's really quite foolproof. You can't put it on wrong and it leaves a really nice finish.